Hello everyone and you are all very welcome to our coverage of the second round of the UCI Mountain Bike Enduro World Cup from Derby, Tasmania. <laughs> Weather had pounded in around the racers throughout practice but it hadn't damaged the Tassie crowd. After four long years it was time to go racing once again in Derby. It was time for the second round of the UCI Mountain Bike Enduro World Cup. Stage 1 Roxanne required precision through the fast sweeping turns and commitment through its boulder fields. With just one run of practice completed in torrential rain, that became an even taller order. But with the derby crowd bigger and rowdier than ever, the racers were given no option but to send it. The slowly baking earth was like Velcro, making an already physical stage now torturously tough going. I was so piddly. It was so hard. Wow. When you think you're getting down, there's just more piddling. Go around the corner, more piddling. Yeah, it was really tough. There were issues right from the start for the reigning champ. Ismo Cordurier was 15 seconds back and all of a sudden had a lot of work to do if she wanted to make it two from two in 2023. The Australian Zoe Cuthbert set a scorching time early on stage one which held up well, yet E Fox's Bex Barona topped it. But it would be short lived. Trek Factory Racing's Hattie Harnden was on a tear. She went fastest by 2.2 seconds. Oh, yeah! So many people. It's amazing. They made me push so much harder. But I'm so dead now. Hattie Harnden led the way by 2.2 seconds from Bex Barona. Australian XC star Zoe Cuthbert had a brilliant opening time to be inferred just ahead of Ella Connolly. Sharon Cordurier rounded out the top 10. Canada's Remy Govan was feeling strong after a good start to the year in Medina until this crash. Winded myself. I thought I could keep going, but it's pretty painful, so I think I'll call it there. The 2021 champ, Jack Moyer, had ground to make up after a tough round one. He would finish the first stage 8.8 .8 seconds off the lead. I think. That's the worst one, head of wise. It's gonna be a long day. The 2022 champ, Jesse Melamed, was one spot ahead of him in fifth. Hey, go, Jesse. Jesse. Hey. You all good? Oh, yeah, sorry. That was so hard. You just keep pedaling. It's gonna suck no matter what, so just keep pedaling. Eddie Masters, give him the silent head go. Yeah! Yeah! Francis Hugo Pigeon was fourth behind Pivot Factory Racing's Eddie Masters, but it was that rarest of things in enduro racing, two teammates leading the race. A pair of Yetis were lying astern with Slavomir Lukasik and then Richie Rood tapping their not unsubstantial watts on to lead the way. The latter led by 3.8 seconds. In practice you like go like 80% and you're like flowing. Race day, you're like, oh, this needs speed, needs speed. I don't think I sat down like the entire way except for the climb. In the elite men's, it was the two Yeti riders out front, Root and Lukasik. Eddie Masters was in third ahead of Hugo Pigeon and Jesse Melamed. The 42.4 km Blue Derby race course included some tried and tested classics alongside some brand new treats and over 1,400 metres of descending. The second test was another Blue Derby staple, dam busters, fast flowing and requiring sniper-like precision. The iconic trouty was the halfway point, culminating in a massive rock resembling a fish before the racers could return to the pits for the technical assistance zone. Stage 4 was detonate with its famous boulders, brand new for this year was Cuddles, 
with a freshly rebuilt lower section before the final and biggest challenge, Kumagatsu at 4.1 kilometers in length and a vertical drop of nearly 400 meters. The second stage was another world trail masterpiece, Dam Busters. But as fun as it was to ride, racing it would be an altogether different proposition with any error equaling chunks of time lost. Cordurier remained in trouble, now visibly uncomfortable, chatter surrounding damage sustained in a crash in practice increased. She was fifth on Dam Busters and would hemorrhage another 7.9 seconds. Leanna Curtis got home ahead of the champ and just behind another impressive ride from the Czech, Barbara Prukova. But it was the British duo out front. This time it was Bex Barona who topped the timesheets. Five seconds ahead of Harnden, it changed the lead of the bike race and meant that the Tweed Valley local now led. In the elite men's race, fan of practice's tough conditions, Charlie Murray was fifth on the stage and now up in the ninth on the road. Jesse Melamed had opted for a canyon set up for the trip that aired towards the faster flowing stages of Derby and was starting to put it to good effect. He was third on the stage and now up two spots on the road and deferred. But with Bex Barona now leading in the women's, Yeti Fox were affecting a turquoise stranglehold on the race. Lukasic took the stage win from Rude, but the American still led the overall by 3.7 seconds. Trouty and its crowds awaited. The baying mob had massed on its rocky outcrops and could be heard all the way from the town centre itself. Only one of the most fearsome stages in enduro stood between the racers and the technical assistance zone. Luke Meyer Smith was struggling. No good, I've uh, got a bit of a flu, takes all the energy out of you, and yeah, struggling on the pedals a bit. Aussie downhill star Connor Fearon, who had got himself on the Medina podium at round one, was off the pace just outside the top 20. Jesse Melamed was warming up in the midday sun. The Canyon Collective rider won the third stage of the day by just eight hundredths of a second from second in the series, Dan Booker, with New Zealand's Bradley Harris a superb third. Uh, thankfully, stage three was a lot more techy and, and more fun and the crowd was out there, so it was really sick. That's more of like what Derby has to offer, so that was, that was cool and just happy the sun's out and it's uh, not like practice. <laughs> Richie Rude's lead of the race was now out to 4.4 seconds ahead of his new teammate. First half of the day was, yeah, pedal hard and get get good times on the first two stages. Me and uh, Slavic were just like, that was kind of the goal for that one and we both pushed hard and got good times. Yeah, a bit more techie riding for the next few stages and yeah, gotta keep pushing. But it was Giant Factory Racing's resident Frenchman, Ewan Deneau, who was on the move. He was up four places and in the fourth behind Melamed. Pretty technical with the rain uh, last, uh, last few days, so it's not an easy one. Uh, it's pretty rocky and dirty, so fast as possible and doing less mistake. Rude led the way at the halfway point by just 4.4 seconds. Lukasic was second and Melamed was third. Ewan Deneau, perhaps spurred on by the success of his teammate Meyer Smith at round one, was riding high and forth ahead of Jack Moyer. Isabel Cordurier's crash in practice had seen her leg caught up amongst her frame, and on a stage as pedally as Troity, she was gritting her teeth. It's uh, quite difficult for me today, but I just uh, try to manage my body and 
the form I have after crashing in practice. So just trying to rank as many points as I can until the end. When I crashed, my leg got stuck in between my frame somewhere and it basically destroyed my calf. So it's very swollen and quite painful. The race leader, Bax Baruna, was fourth on Trouty, with her first stage win of the day going to Medina podium placer, Ella Connolly. Patty Harnden was second, just ahead of Gloria Scarzi. Baruna now led Harnden by just one tenth of a second as the racers headed to the safety of the pits and the technical assistance zone. Yeah, I love the condition because it's very, it changes a lot. Sometimes it, it's like grassy and sometimes it's a little bit dry. So we always have to adapt to riding and I like it. Yeah, it's going all good. Got the two uh, lung busters out of the way. And then um, had the pleasure of racing down Trouty, but came a little unstuck at the bottom. <laughs> the rocks aren't very nice to crash on. Don't think I lost too much time, sir. So. Had a few moments on that last stage, three, but I kept it on the wheels, so pretty happy with that. Just have 20 minutes here to just recharge a bit of uh, in energy and food and just uh, get going again for three more. Having a nice day, to be honest. Woke up feeling pretty calm and I was a bit nervous that I wasn't nervous. So, but yeah, the time seemed to be going well and it's definitely pretty slippy out there. Um, just got a ride on instinct, so yeah, I'm having a good time. There was now no escaping either the sun or the derby crowds. Both featured brightly on detonate. The rocks and the noise awaited. After 2022, Isabel Cordelier is only too familiar with the old adage that you win titles on your bad days and wasn't letting go for whatever points that she could salvage from Derby. She was holding on in fifth. Morgan Shard beat Ella Conley home to third on the stage, but it was the now familiar figures of Harnden and Baruna out front. The Yeti rider pulled another three seconds on her compatriot. Bex now led the race by 3.3 seconds. Ella Connolly was further adrift in third, but holding Morgan Shar at bay nicely. Katie Winton was having a good day in seventh ahead of Curtis, Pujan and Richter. If Medina had been the charge of the downhillers, then the Enduro big guns were firing once more in Derby. Reese Werner, the fastest non-Aussie from round one, was now up inside the top ten. The elite men's race was turning into a slugfest. The two heavy hitters were trading blows at the front. Round four went to Lukasic by three tenths of a second. Rude's lead was now four seconds. Cuddles was stage five, and its warm and fuzzy name belied a stage littered with big features, the most notable of which were two huge rock slabs, one to hurtle across and one to plummet down.
Every passing kilometre was now agony for Isabel Cardurier. Eighth on stage five meant that she had crawled back up one place to fourth in the overall. Isa was toughing it out. Ibis's Rafaela Richter was fourth on the stage behind the supremely impressive Liana Curtis. But at the front, Hattie Harnden knew that if she was going to stand any chance of winning the bike race, she'd have to go deep. She won on five. The final stage decider was on. As they headed back up to the top then, here's how the race was delicately balanced. Hattie Harnden had, just as in the Tweed Valley in 2021, taken Bex Barona to a final stage decider. Under a second now separated them, and Bex, after the new for this year reseeding, would drop last. Third to eighth place in the men's race was getting congested with anyone from Murray to Melamed seemingly in with a shout at taking the final step of what had been a spellbinding return to Derby. Luke Meyer-Smith off colour but digging deep finished stage 5 and 5th just behind Orbea's Martin Mays. Again on stage 5 there was nothing to choose between the two Yeti Fox pilots. Rude edged Lukasik by 3 tenths of a second on the stage. It was still punch and counter punch. Just 4 seconds separated Richie Rude from Slavomir Lukasik. Would Poland's finest be able to dethrone the reigning US national champ? Who would win the heavyweight battle of the Yetis in the Tasmanian Outback? Komagotsa would decide. Komagotsa was the biggest stage of the day at 4.1 kilometers in length. It dropped almost 400 vertical meters through just about every style of trail and condition imaginable would be a suitable place to decide one of the most intriguing international enduro races in years. One last round. One last chance to land the knockout punch. The goal was uh, just to rank some points, like uh, what I could, so I'm just trying to hang on and honestly looking forward to finish the day now. Yeah, it's felt pretty tough. I feel like I've really had to battle today. Not feeling like myself on the bike today. Feeling good. Yeah, I feel like I like did a good one last run and like feel I'm riding well. So keeping your momentum going, I think like hitting hitting your lines and not being distracted by all the other like ruts and things that have appeared. Quite cool to be reseeded, go down last. I've honestly been doing nothing different all day. Just been riding my bike. So just do the same on this last one and dig deep. Isabel Corderier was down but by no means out. The Lapierre Zip Collective rider came home in fifth on the final stage. It was enough for four from the overall, not the points all she would have wanted, but it was points nonetheless on what was a tough day at the office. Ella Connolly had kept enough fuel in the tank to smash her way to second place in the final stage, splitting the two overall protagonists. Hattie Harnden had ridden almost faultlessly all day. But her wait for the follow-up win to her victory in Burke last season would continue. Bex Barona has been around bike racing long enough to know that when it comes to a final descent decider and you're the last rider to drop then attack is always the best form of defence the UK rider dug deep and crossed the line to win on Komagatsa by 1.1 seconds to take the victory. It feels insane. I honestly just want to like call my parents, but they'll be sleeping right now. <laughs> that last run, I definitely gave absolutely everything. But for the rest of the day, I was like just having fun, just riding, being strong. And it's a great competition with Hattie. And like we've spent the whole day together just chatting our way up the hills and yeah, doing some good racing together. So it's been mint.
couple of little mistakes, but mostly a clean day, so I'm happy. Just gonna try and get down this big, brutal last one to finish. Came a cropper on the last one, but we got another stage, so fingers crossed for a tidy one to finish the day. It's kind of been hard to ride because it's dried out in spots, but it's so dark and like damp in some sections of the woods that it really changes. So like you come into corners and like one's dry and sick and one's wet and not. Feel good on uh, this uh, track in Derby, so I think like we, we are having fun and, and go fast. Pushing hard all day and then, yeah, it feels good to be Last one down, definitely a bit nervous. We've had a big break since stage five, but uh, yeah, got to push hard on this one and finish strong. Just nine seconds separated the top elite men on the final stage. The series leader Luke Meyer Smith continued to rally and came home in seventh, but would end the day in 24th. Jesse Melamed came home in 14th on the final stage. It wasn't the result he wanted, but he had ridden superbly all day, and it was enough to get him onto the podium and into third. Just as Connolly had done in the women's, Jack Moyer split the warring fractions at the front. Two riders, one team, one stage left to decide it. Slavomir Lukasic proved himself to be what many had long touted him to be, the real deal with a heroic attempt to claim the number one spot on the podium. His problem was when Richie Rude smells a win, there is virtually nothing that will stop him from claiming it. Rude won by 1.8 seconds on the final stage, with the pole coming in in third behind Moyer. We've had some big, big days on a Yeti before, but Bex took the win in the Elite Women's. You and Slavomir battling it out all day. This has to be one of the biggest. Yeah, so a while, like in the pits before six, and asked Shawnee where Bex was and said she was leading. And I was like, whoa, this is like a big day for us. And having big boy Slav on the pedals, just, oh, yeah, I was just thinking about it. And just, yeah, it's really cool. And here's how it finished in Derby, Tasmania. Bex Barona takes the win ahead of Hattie Harnden and Ella Connolly. One and two in the world last time out. Cordurier and Shar were fourth and fifth. Prukova and Curtis both proved their place amongst the world's best, getting in ahead of Richter, Winton and Wellerby. And here are the results of that titanic struggle then. Richie Rude chocks up another win and has undoubtedly had the best time of it in Tasmania of the pre-season favourites. Slavomir Lukasic takes second ahead of Jesse Melamed. Moyer and Mays were fourth and fifth respectively. And Matt Walker came out victorious in Pivot Factory Racing's own little internal power struggle, beating Eddie Masters to ninth. <laughs> and in the team's race, well, when you win both races in the majority of the stages, you tend to take the top prize. Yeti Fox reigns supreme in Derby. In terms of the overall title races then, after a frenetic two weeks of racing in Tasmania, they shape up like this. Bex Barona leaves Tasmania with the overall leader's jersey, ahead of Isabel Cordurier and Ella Connolly. Hattie Harnden and Morgan Shar round out the top five, ahead of Kate Wellerly. In the elite men's title race, normal operating procedure has been restored. Sort of. Richie Rood leaves Australia with the leader's jersey, but it's still the young guns, Dan Booker and Luke Meyer-Smith, 
their second and third respectively. Lukasik, Melamed and Werner are chasing them down. It had been far too long since the UCI Mountain Bike Enduro World Cup had visited Derby and it did not disappoint for a single metre. Thank you to everyone in this very, very special corner of the world who has made our first two races of the year possible. It was an absolute pleasure. We'll see you next time.